On February 21st in 1991, the anniversary of the assassination of Malcolm X, June Jordan, the writer and poet, gave a speech in Hayward, California against the U.S. war in the Gulf. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this killer crusade, this conversion of a stranger's land into a killing field, this reduction of a people to a video display, this homicidal rhetoric that history does not support, that our common destiny is certain to condemn, this war has not saved one human being. This war has not saved a single American life. This war has not saved a single Israeli life. This war has not saved a single Iraqi life. This war has not rescued the lives of Kuwait. This grand undertaking, this enormous, this infinitely casual overkill, this draining of our hearts, this annihilation of all tenderness, this erasure of every reason, every rational and civilized approach to dispute, this arched and leering assault upon all peaceable possibilities, this blasphemy unleashed against our shrunken, trembling earth that has become in the hellified lexicon of the killers ruling us a target-rich environment. This war has not saved one human being from terror or from unspeakable agonies of extinction, then why do we permit this blasphemy to persist, expand, and explode our body politic as well as the entire Middle East? I grieve the sorrow, roar the sorrow, sob. I grieve the monstrous consequences of this war. But I am reassured because not every American has lost her mind or his soul. Not every one of my compatriots who be has become a flag-wrapped lunatic, lusting after oil and power, the perversions of kicking ass, preferably via TV. A huge number of Americans has joined with enormous numbers of Arab peoples and European communities in Germany, England, France, Italy, Spain, and Muslim communities throughout India and Pakistan to cry out, stop. When I say huge, I mean it. If 1,000 Americans contacted by some pollster can be said to represent 250 million people, then how many multi-multi-millions do we anti-war movement gatherings of more than 100,000 coast to coast and on every continent, how many do we represent? How come nobody ever does that kind of political math? Tonight, February 21st, 1991, 
when yet again the ruling white men of America despise peace and sneer at negotiations and intensify their arm's length armchair prosecution of this evil war, this display of a racist value system that will never allow for any nationalism that is not their own and that will never allow third world countries to control their own natural resources and that will never ever express, let alone feel, regret or remorse or shame or horror at the loss of any human life that is not white tonight. I am particularly proud to be an African American by launching the heaviest air assault in history against Iraq on January 15th. George Bush dared to desecrate the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. Tonight, and 83,000 bombing missions later, is the 26th anniversary of the assassination of Malcolm X. On this sorry evening, the world has seen the pathological real deal behind the sanctimonious rhetoric of Bush and company. The Persian Gulf War is not about Iraqi withdrawal from Kuwait. The war is not about Kuwait at all. Clearly, it's not about international law or respect or United Nations resolutions, since by comparison to Washington and Pretoria, the butcher of Baghdad is a minor league Johnny-come-lately to the realm of outlaw conduct and contempt for world opinion. I want to say something specific to you, Mr. President. It's true you can humiliate and you can hound and you can smash and burn and terrify and smirk and boast and defame and demonize and dismiss and incinerate and starve. Oh yes, you can force somebody, <coughs> force a people to surrender what happens to remain of their bloody bowels into your grasping, bony, dry hands. But all of us who are weak, we watch you. And we learn from your hatred. And we do not forget. And we're ready, Mr. President. We are most of the people on this godforsaken planet.